Hey everyone, uh, welcome to our first video in our IRA tutorial series where we'll be showing you how to create different shaders and game mechanics found in IRA Act 1 Pilgrimage. Alright, so let's get started. So the first thing we're going to be creating today is a pixelation shader. And so it'll basically take any game you have and you can scale the pixelization to look something like a, a retro pixel style game. Uh, it's a pretty neat effect. Um, for our instance, uh, in IRA, we're actually using it for computer monitors within the game, so um, they just kind of have an old-style feel to them. Alright, so you can see here I created a shader tutorial folder. Um, you can put it in any folder you want, but once you have a folder ready for this, go ahead and go into the content browser, right-click in the empty space, and go ahead and create a new material. So, we're just going to call this one, let's just call it... Uh, spell pix pixelate okay so that'll be our pixelation post process shader go ahead and double click it to open it up all right might appear to my other window and I'm gonna go ahead and connect this up here so right next to my uh, main window here I'm just gonna slide it up there so as you can see we have a normal shader right now the first thing you're gonna want to do is go down here to material and make sure in the material domain it's not gonna be surface anymore it's going to be post process. Okay, so I'll change this to a post process shader. Now, the shader we're going to create is pretty simplistic. Um, it's not going to take too much to get it going, but it creates a really neat effect. So, hopefully, you guys will uh, find this useful. So, we'll go ahead and right click in the, in the graph. And let's see, let's do screen position. And so, if you just type in screen, you'll see you can get the undercordon screen position. Grab that. Next thing we're going to need is a masking component. So basically, it's going to be a component mask under math. Click on that. And it's going to be an R and G. And that's fine. You don't have to do anything else to it. Just leave it as is. Connect those two up. Okay. We're going to need a multiply node now. So an easy way to get that is just to hold down M on your keyboard and go ahead and click. Bam. Multiply node, just like that connect it up. The next thing we're going to need is a scalar parameter. I could press 1 on my keyboard and then click and it would give me a constant. I could right click it and convert it to a parameter which would be a scalar parameter. Um, or you can just hold down S, click it, bam, you have a scalar parameter. So once you get that scalar parameter, uh, go ahead and set its default value to 300. And then under the parameter name, Let's just call it pixelization. Oops. Oh, geez. We'll call it uh, pixelate amount. All right. So the next node you're going to need is a floor. So if you right click, type in floor, grab a floor node, go ahead and connect them together. And then go ahead and run the floor up to the multiply. All right, just like that. So the multiply is going to need to go into another floor node. So you can either type in floor, get it again, or just copy and paste. Control C, Control V, and get another floor node. Connect it up right there. It's good. And then these two floors right here both need to go into a divide. So right click that divide, connect them in, floor into A, floor into B, and then this is going to basically give us the effect we want, but it needs to be mapped to a screen texture, okay, so you can see, you can see the effect on the screen. Um, so let's go ahead and get a scene texture, you can see there under texture, we have scene texture, okay. And so plug the divide into the UVs, take the color, plug that into the emissive color, and that's basically what you have to do. Now you're going to see an error right here, and it's because it's scene texture, scene color. It's not supposed to be scene color. So what you're going to have to do is have the node selected, go to the scene texture under the details panel, click scene color, and set it to be post process input zero. And then so that'll make sure it's, it's proper. Go ahead and save. 
Once you're done saving, head back over to your main tab here. So we have the shader created. Now we have to have it um, applied to the scene. So what you're, wanna, what you're gonna wanna do is come up to modes and in a search for classes, just type post process. And just type post, it'll come up. You'll see a post process volume. And that's how we're gonna apply our post process effect to the world. So go ahead and drag it out into the scene. And then under its details panel, scroll down Let's see. Yeah, under post process volume, click on settings, scroll down. Under blendables, so drop that down, you're going to see elements. You're going to want to add an element, okay? And under the element, you're going to want to choose asset reference, and we need to set the asset reference. So we could just use this pixelate material. However, if we go ahead and right click it and create a material instance of it, then we can go ahead and change the the pixelation amount on the fly. So I'll show you that in a sec. So go ahead and have this selected. Go ahead and use select the asset from content browser and that'll place your pixelate shader or sorry pixelate instance um, into the post process blendable. And so now what that means is it's going to be using that. So if I were to fly into this cube right here, oop, yep, you'd see that everything starts to pixelate. Looks very retro pixel, doesn't it? Um, if I fly outside of it, everything goes back to normal. Pixelate, normal, pixelate, normal. So that's pretty cool, right? But what if I want to apply it to the whole screen at once? So if you go back over here to your details panel with your post process selected, you're going to see um, unbound, and it's right below the blendables that you're just working on. If you click unbound, it unbinds it from just using the bounds of this box and it applies it to the entirety of the scenes. Go ahead and click that. You can see that everything is now pixelated regardless of whether you're inside the box or not. So this is like a good way to test the effect. So coming back to our instance here that we created, double click it, and you can see that pop up right here. Um, what we're going to want to do is just kind of set this off to the side, and then under the scalar parameter we created, you know, it says pixelate amount, remember that? Uh, go ahead and click on it, and we can control the amount of pixelation that's going to occur. So we can scroll that down, you can see you know, it gets a lot more pixelated, um, which is pretty cool. So you can go ahead and play with that and, and see how pixelated you actually want it to be. And if you keep going down, you can see it starts to really degrade. <laughs> uh, you can barely tell what's happening. Um, <laughs> so you can do that. Um, crank it up. There you go. So it's a cool little way to create a post-process effect that looks like retro pixel art. Um, you guys can do whatever you want with that. It's pretty fun to do. All right, so that's, that's it for our first tutorial on how to create a retro pixel shader in Unreal 4. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any questions or comments or uh, any thoughts on how we could improve, uh, let us know. Thank you very much. Bye.